If you would be, you would be turning your Bibles to the book of John, chapter 4. We'll study it. We're going to start reading a little bit this morning. Uh, make a few comments on this. But uh, in this uh, chapter here, while we see where that the Samaritan woman was at the well, uh, uh, and Jesus was talking to her, and uh, he wound up his little bit of talk as uh, the disciples come along and uh, they had been out I guess the biggest part of the day trying to uh, find some stuff to eat and they brought him back to Jesus and they were concerned about his condition and uh, he noticed here in, uh, uh, in verse 25 of chapter 4 talking about the uh, the woman uh, said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is Christ, called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee, and he, and you know, you don't see that too many times in the Bible, and I, I didn't look to see if it was in it, but I don't remember him really uh, saying, uh, you know, that, 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 and, uh, introducing himself that way, but anyway, I'm sure it's in there again. But anyway, and then on verse 27, and upon this came his disciples and marveled that he had talked with the woman. And uh, why that they marveled so was because the, uh, this this woman's people, all of them were half Jewish, right, and they were all. Uh, at each other, uh, uh, they they didn't have anything to do with anyone uh, to get, and so she, they marveled at, that uh, Jesus was talking to her. But the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city, and, and said to the men, "Come and see a man which told me all things that they ever did. Is it not this? Is not this the Christ?" Then they went out of the city and came to him, unto him, and in the meanwhile. His disciples, here's, here's what I'm going to get to. And in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed or encouraged him, saying, Master, eat. Because they knew that Jesus had been a long time since he'd eat, and they were the ones that were supposed to supply Jesus' food. They were his servants, and they uh, had went and found some, and they were offering him this food. But notice here what he says. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Amen. And uh, this is what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this morning on uh, uh, the scripture here. Uh, we all have we all have plates. They're full. And we all have different things on that plate. Amen. And Jesus had a had a plate full. And uh, notice what he said to them after he told them that uh, he had meat to eat that they you know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Amen. And this this morning I thought about this as you know as we've had these holidays and and we have just had our, our fill of food and our place has been run over and, and we throw it away probably more than we eat. But, you know, Jesus had a, had a, a, a plate full. Mm -hmm. And he had to, he had this, this, this meat that he had, he's talking about was, to do the Father's will. And, you know, that should be our desire this morning is to uh, entertain the thought that uh, we have a plate before us at all times. Mm -hmm. And on that plate, there is things, and, and, and you can use this this right here as the plate. Amen. And you can you can read it here, and you can understand what that God would have us to, uh, if you would, eat, or what He would have us to do. And we need to, we need to think upon this as we read God's Word, how many times we throw away our plate full of food into the trash. Mm. And how often it just goes undone. Right. And, you know, and uh, uh, this, this thing with 
throwing our food away, and I, I saw it yesterday. Uh, we we just empty so we have so much we have so much to to, to do that we can throw part of it away. And it's it's the same way with a Christian this morning. He has he he gets God he God comes in so strong with him through the Holy Ghost. Amen. And speaks to his heart and fills his he fills his soul full. And listen, he'll go away a lot of the time, and he'll never he'll never use that that food that he has to uh, do God's will and to uh, uh, encourage others. And in in, in, in this uh, uh, this plate, uh, there is an encouragement. Mm -hmm. And you know we we need to we need to let our light shine, and we need to we need to use this this plate to get out here and to uh, tell others about it. And I was thinking as we, as, uh, as we uh, look at this, this plate, the many times in the scriptures were that Jesus had his plate full. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, one, one place in the, that I, I thought about was when, when Lazarus was sick. And Jesus knew that Lazarus was going to die. Right. And he knew that he didn't need to be there because it wasn't God's will for him to be there. But he 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 stayed away four days before that he come to this. And when he came, Mary run to him and said, "If you'd have been here, mm -hmm. if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died." Now listen, Jesus knew that. But Jesus, as he is saying here, I have meat to eat that no one knows about. Hmm. And he, he had meat there to eat that no one knew about because he knew what he was going to do. Amen. He knew this, this just as sure as the world that, that Lazarus was going to die because he told the disciples, they said, if he sleepeth, he doeth well. But he said, Lazarus is dead. Mm -hmm. And so here is the plate before him. What is he to do with this? Listen. <laughs> He's got the plate there. Mm -hmm. And that plate has got some food on it that's unfitting to eat. But listen, on the other side it's got a dessert. Mm -hmm. It's got a dessert. And now the, the, the unfit food for Jesus was that Lazarus was going to have died. And that he had to go there and he had to face those people and he had to hear Mary say that and he had to see the tears roll down her face and he himself cried. But listen, when it was all said and done, Lazarus was brought forth. Amen. Here is the dessert, people. Here is the dessert. And it's the same way here this morning with this Samaritan woman as she leaves. And then she goes and tells her people about this thing, and she accepts it, and she tells them, and they come and see him, and then they say, now we know that what the woman said was true before that we didn't know. And so Jesus had to uh, use this, this plate that he had before him to, to lead these people in the right direction. And, and this morning, he's, he's leading us. He's, he's filling our hearts. He's filling our hearts and the Holy Ghost. And people, I understand more every day, the Holy Ghost is speaking to our hearts. Amen. He is, he is telling us the things that we need to do. And listen, please don't reject that Holy Ghost Spirit. That's speaking to you because so many times when when we and it's, it's been taught you know by not the, using the Holy Ghost it's it's a, another religion but no it's not Amen that Holy Ghost is in our soul this morning He's speaking to our hearts and I know this morning that He uh, speaks to my heart and He tells me things that I should do and when I don't do them listen I know about it but mm -hmm. when I do do it I get a blessing out Amen. of it. And it's the same way with the, with the plate full of food. Listen, when 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 we when we have that plate before us, we need to digest that plate and get it and do the will of the Lord because He said here 
in, in our lesson here this morning, my meat is to do the will of Him that sent me and to finish His work. Amen. We have a work that is set before us this morning. And whether we reject it or whether we go ahead and take this plate and we eat this and, and, and get this done, and I know some, some, you know, it might not sound just right, but listen, that's what I'm basing my, my uh, little uh, lesson on this morning. Listen, we have got a plate before us Amen. at all times, regardless of what, what people want to think. We've got a plate before us because we're God's people, we're saved people, and He has got a, a job for each one of us to do. And listen, until we do it, we're not in His will. And, and, and if we reject it, we need to, we need to kind of wake up a little bit and, 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 and listen to what the Holy Ghost is speaking to our hearts. Now, I want to read something to you this morning in Matthew 4. And uh, if, you'll read, if you'll turn with me or you can just listen. To in Matthew's Gospel, in verse 4, uh, in uh, verse 1, we want to see here what happened to Jesus. Then was Jesus led out of the Spirit into the wilderness. And of course, this was right after that he had, they had heard this voice and, and it's saying that I, that uh, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So listen, He had done something that was pleasing to the Father. And it's the same way with us this morning. When we do something that's, that when we, when we, uh, have this plate and we use it to, and we do something for the Lord listen the Lord is pleased with us but hey he's got something else for us right and notice what he says here then was Jesus led of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterward hungry now notice in all of this that the, the, the scripture does not say that Satan tempted Jesus during those 40 days. People, it's the same way this morning with us. He will let us get to the weakest point in our, our life and He'll get us so downtrodden and so discouraged before He does what He needs to do. And that's when, notice what He says, And when the tempter came to Him, He said, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. So he knew Jesus was hungry. Jesus had said that after that he hungered. And, and, and it's the same old Satan. He knows just exactly how to, to rid you of that, that meal off of that plate and let it go into the garbage and say, well, I'll do something else. But listen, this is what we need to do. We need to, we need to listen to what the Holy Ghost says to us. Amen. Jesus... Jesus is tempted. Jesus is tempted, and he says, "Here, he hit him at the lowest point. He was, he was, he was hungry, and he'll do you the same way." And he said, "If thou be, if thou be, he wants to, uh, you know, antagonize him again or, or weaken him a little bit more." And he's pointing to him with thou, and said, "If thou be," and, G, and, and the devil knew all the time he was Jesus. He knew it. He knew it and he knew it, but he's 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 the master of the seat. And he said, if thou be, and let me tell you this morning, if he'll do that to you or to Jesus, he'll do it to you. Right. And he knows just exactly when to point his finger and when he's to say and discourage you. But don't let this happen if you can possibly do it, because uh, he 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 will he will do it. So, but he says, but. He answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the devil. And so we, I, want you, I wanted to bring this to you this morning, that how that, how that when the Lord gives you, lays a burden on your heart, uh, how he, when He puts that on your plate, listen, there is, it's not all perfect. Uh, in, in, the, in the sense that you look at everything that you've got, you've got all these different foods and all of them are good. Listen, some of them, some of them taste bitter. <laughs> some of them taste bad. But listen, when you get that down, the good part is to come. And when you, when you do that, 
you're in the will of the Lord and He blesses you because He, he said up here in verse 17, And lo, the voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And that's the same, the same action He'll have towards you. So now, the devil would notice here, he takes him on up into the high places and he tempts him and he, and he, and he tempts him. And he's, the Lord answers him with all of these questions and the devil leaves him. Mm -hmm. And so again this morning, when, when we have these things, when we have, when we have this before us, when we have this, this, this task before us, when we have this the, the desire caused by the Holy Ghost in our, in our body Amen. To, to speak to us, and we have this, please what, be careful. But listen, you have you, you should have a desire in your heart to do it. But always remember this: that the devil is there to interfere with whatever you're doing. Right. And so again, we see here that the uh, in our lesson this morning, the disciples, the disciples were concerned about Jesus, and they had a right to be, because listen, they were his servants, and we have a right to be uh, concerned about our brothers and sisters and we have a right to be concerned about those that say that they've never been saved Amen. we have a right to do that and so this morning we have uh, the same problem as the disciples did by worrying about Jesus but what they didn't know what he said until he said what he did about my meat to, is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work then he said here in verse 35, notice, Say not ye there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. And, and he said, you know, Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the field for the harvest, for they are quite already to harvest. Amen. Now he is, he, explained, he is explaining to them this morning why he said this about my meat. And it's the same way with us this morning. If we, if we get that from the Holy Ghost and, and do this. Listen, it don't mean wait and wait and wait and wait. But he says here, you look now. Mm -hmm. You look now. The harvest is ripe. And people, listen, the harvester is, is, ready, is, is getting ready to, to harvest the wheat. And all, that, all of that that's, that's not mature and got the grain, listen, it's going to be cut down and it's going to fall and it's going to be underfoot of man and it's going to be put in a place of torment right but listen the harvest the harvest and he said here you don't you don't wait until you see the antichrist uh set in the in the temple and and, and tell the people i'm god you don't wait that long but you wait you do it when the when the holy spirit comes and tells you these things to do you need to do them and uh if if you if you get if you get embarrassed about trying to do the thing that you that you do, let me tell you something. It's better to be embarrassed than to be out of the will of the Lord. Amen. It's so much better to be. I, I mean, hey, most of the time when I get up here and try to try to read and say a few words, listen, I, I go away just saying, well, you know, I did all I can do. Hmm. But then I I get to hear I get to hear someone that can really preach a message. I said, oh, what a mess I make. But the thing of it is, God knows what you can do. And listen, if you get if you get embarrassed or if you get uh, uh, like that, well, hey, just say, thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord because, hey, you did all you could do. And, uh, and there, hey, there may be a wonderful blessing in that for you that you don't even see. So right. here again in our lesson, again here, he says here, uh, lift up your eyes and look on the field, for they are quite already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto eternal life, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Amen. And this, this is this is the, this is the church. Uh, some of us, and and you know when he's talking about sowing. The apostles had already been before him, and they had sold the word. And his disciples, they got, they had an opportunity to reap 
some of the, the, that fruit that, that the other older man had, had sowed. But here we see here that both he that is soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And this morning we can we can sow and we can reap together because we have the we have the more more knowledge than they did there about the Holy Spirit and about what God would have us to do. And so when we go out we go out and we witness and we uh, see God's work working, uh, we can come back and we can fellowship with our brothers and sisters and say, hey, this is an experience that I've had. Amen. And listen, that experience, that, any, that experience should be as important to you as if it had happened to you. Because listen, you in some way or another may have uh, sowed some of that seed and helped to, to do that thing that, that uh, they're telling you about. So he said here that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true. One soweth and another reapeth. I send you to reap that whereupon ye bestow no labor. Other men labor and ye are entered into their labor. And so that's the way that both of them can, can rejoice in the sowing and in the labor. So notice here in verse 39, and we get back to the, to the lady, the Samaritan woman that, that Jesus had witnessed to. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all things I ever did. So when the Samaritans were coming to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days, and many more believed because of his word. Here's the, here's the, here's the, uh, the, the dessert. And many more believed because of his own word, and, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this indeed is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Amen. So he stayed around a couple more days and uh, there, the, the job was done and he, they, were, they were all blessed. And so uh, here's a, uh, another thing that I want to bring back to you in Matthew's Gospel. Again, if you, if you want to turn there in Matthew 4, I want to show you something else about uh, uh, what Jesus in uh, the in uh, Matthew 4 uh, let's see I believe it is yeah it is okay in words that John was baptizing Jesus uh, I'll get to it just a minute here if I can find it real quick I wanted to show you something the permissive will of the Lord uh, in this uh, it's in 4 I think uh, okay, in verse 3, I'm sorry, it's in chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he which was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Fire ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions around about Jordan and were baptized of him in the Jordan confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruit, meat for repentance. Amen. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able with these sons to raise up the children of Abraham. And I wanted to read in verse 13. Now notice. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan of, unto John to be baptized of him. For John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answered, said, said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And I, I looked at this word suffered, and uh, it, it means to permit. It means to, uh, uh, to let 
And, and that's what he's saying. Then Jesus permitted John to baptize him. Now, Jesus also, in, in, his, in his ministry, and you can imagine this, this, this plate we've been talking about, but along later, in his latter days of his life, he permitted them to nail him to the cross. Mm -hmm. He permitted them to put that spear in his side. Right. He permitted them uh, to spit on him, to put the crown of thorns. He permitted uh, Caesar to, uh, Pilate rather, to, uh, to do the things that he did. He permitted that. Right. And listen, uh, Jesus had a, a plate full that he that he had to go through in these things here, and but he noticed how that he he permitted them to do these things, and uh, we sometimes we have to let things happen in our life that we don't really uh, enjoy. But the thing of it is, when all of this was done, all of this permitting, it was for one purpose, and that even the baptism of John was to identify him. He, he, he was to identify him. It was also to speak of what kind of death, burial, and resurrection he would have. And also that, that Jesus would fulfill the scriptures uh, being, uh, being baptized of John and, and dying on the cross of Calvary for uh, our sins. And so Jesus had this also before him. And he, he went and he done it all. And uh, so it should encourage you this morning for uh, some of the things that we uh, we have talked about here this morning to uh, uh, kind of stiffen up a little bit and when the going gets rough listen, all you can do is say Lord, I'm trying to do it for you Amen and, uh, uh, you know, it's it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough situation but the thing of it is uh, we, we have to do it and then there's one more other thing that I thought about on there. It was about Jesus when he was uh, observing the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper, where that he uh, looked up into Judas Iscariot's face as he washed his feet, and uh, and then he and he said he he knew he knew when he did that 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 was the last drop of Judas, but it was written in the Old Testament. That this would happen. Amen. So Jesus had Jesus had to do this, and uh, so there's so many things, and uh, we need to think about the things that we have to want need to do. But uh, just you know, uh, just you just have to uh, wonder uh, what the next thing is. But uh, we uh, we just have to uh, uh, climb that hill when we get to it. And the thing, on, the thing that's so good about it is that you've got the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ with you. Amen. Trying to help you up that hill, help you through that thing. And so just uh, don't get discouraged. Amen. Just don't get discouraged because if you get the least bit discouraged, and I know we do, but listen, we don't need to stay there. And if we get discouraged, well, the devil is he's always there to encourage that discouragement. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, anyway, this is this is some of the things I was thinking about uh, trying to to uh, talk to you about this morning. I hope it, I hope that some of this will uh, cause you to uh, uh, want to study some more about some of the things that uh, are uh, on our plate. Amen. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that we we have seen, a lot of the things that we haven't seen yet. There's there's a lot there's a lot to a lot to come yet. So. Uh, if you stand for the Lord, there's a, there's a plate full, mm -hmm. regardless of what you think about this. Uh, but it is. So thank you so much for listening and pray for me as you as you pray that uh, the Lord will help me with uh, trying to find something or another. Or I like listen to the Holy Holy Ghost and hey, man. listen to Him and see what uh, He wants me to teach or to read or whatever. Because uh, if I don't. If I don't, I'm, I'm spending my wheels. Mm -hmm. I'm wasting my time. I'm wasting your time. I'm not doing no good. And the devil is sitting there laughing silly and saying, hey, he's making a fool out of his supper. Anyway, that's it. Pray for me and uh, I'll, uh, I'll keep on to it. Thank you all. Amen.